Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for kickoffs and kick ons. <laughs> Well, there you go, eh? Ireland, <laughs> champions of Europe. Of uh, the world. <laughs> of the of the top of the world. <laughs> champions of the top of the world. Ireland, hello, welcome to Coco Emerald Isle style. Um, now, to start the show today, gents, I spoke to our resident uh, scriber, Thomas, and I said, could you write us an Irish limerick? Ooh, right. Just to tell everybody what's on the show. Now, Hugo, if you don't mind, I've got Tommy. Could you bring in? He's written a little something. Have you finished it? Yeah. Been waiting on it all day. You're hopeless. <laughs> Um, <laughs> if you could roll in a little bit of Irish music, Hugo, just call it. Don't give it a thumbs up. Give us a yell out. Yes. There you go. Fantastic. Here it is, gents. This is what is on the show. Don't today. fuck it up. Yeah. He'll definitely fuck Mate, it up. Mate, hello and welcome to our funny little show. And one bearded... Oh, I fucked it already. Oh. <laughs> Mate, so slow, too. Here we go. Slow. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> hello and welcome to our funny little show. One we like to affectionately call Coco. On the set, there are three former boys of gold and one bearded leaguey that is questionably old. Swoop is the looker, Goit so wonderfully blunt, Biv the cheeky rascal, and the prof is a bull. <laughs> <laughs> God only knows how we got to Ep 7, but we have in store, what we have in store is pure rah rah heaven. As Australians finally say goodbye to cricket, it's superb and superb W rugby that is on the ticket. From Melbourne, Andrew Kellaway and Grace Hamilton will lighten our mood. All questions have been cleared by the Rebels to stop us from getting sued. <laughs> then from Victoria, we take off in flying style to grace the Six Nations victors on the Emerald Isle. Mac Hansen will return and the Guinness will flow. The Irish faithful will party with the hardware in tow. So stay tuned, ye northern legends, hungry for information as the Coco Show serves its final Six Nations summation. Whether you're at Icebergs, Rat Park, or just on Smoko, it's time to shut the fuck up and tune into Coco. <laughs> yeah. Tommy. Tommy. Gee, that was rough on you. Yeah, I know, yeah. mate. He's just right here. Boys, I've got a Guinness for each of us just Ooh. to celebrate the Irish victory there. Wow. We've I all got a bit of Irish Ooh. in us, I'm sure. There we go. Congrats to them. Can I have it in a glass? Who backed the Irish from the start? Well... That's what I want to know. Well, well, well. So let's we'll get into it later in the Six Nations summation. All oh, right, okay. But Swoop, you oh, did you back the Irish. I did, um, and you did. Uh, you were the victor, and to the victor goes the spoils. So, <laughs> mm, so sadly for you, Goit, you mm. backed the Welsh, and they came. Where did they come? Stone motherless. Yeah, they didn't do well. No, they but were it's a uh, where. What do they say? It's like a five-year plan. Five-year plan, plan for the Welsh as well, yeah. is it? Well, what we thought then as a result, the fact that you won and that you lost, so mm. you won, got you lost, that perhaps there should be a punishment. Yep. Do we all agree? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Got you to punish. You probably should have just... Well, that should have been discussed at the start. What, as in before we got on air? No, like the start of the Sixth Nation, so that maybe I would have chose someone else. You were always Wales. They love you in the Valleys, yeah, don't I they? Yeah, I love the Valleys. So what we were thinking, I've brought in a leak... Right. <laughs> so obviously, tis the fruit of the Welsh. Um, they yeah. have it on their cereal. I, I think they need to change their little. Um, <laughs> Do they really? Little whatever, whatever that thing is. The leek. Yeah, I mean. Oh, she's a beautiful vegetable. It speaks to their defence, though. <laughs> <laughs> Leaking in so many points. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very True. good point. Yeah. It's not very nice. Well. <laughs> But true. Yeah, but it's just not nice. Okay, I'll try to be nicer. So, so we had the leak, and the leak, as you know, is the national symbol of Wales. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because back in the day, when the Welsh were fighting against the Saxons... Is this true? I, just I had to look it up. I didn't you. know this, yeah, but right. they used to put a leak in their hat <laughs> so that they, they wouldn't kill each other. So you're about to fight a Saxon, you go, wait a second, leak in the hat. No, it's a Welshman. I won't but kill him. It's pretty hard to hide when you've got a leak in your hat. <laughs> well, is this a particularly... <laughs> Not if you're leak? laying down in the field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this... Are they normally this big swoop? Do you know Could your leaks? No, no, I don't. Well, I know the leaks that go in chicken pies, which is not... Yeah, lovely. I love it. Yeah, I that's you love a, a chicken nice leak pie. Chicken leak that's pie. these leaks. It's the same leak. Is it? Is it? Yeah. It's the it same leak. Yeah. So, Swoop, over to you, mate. You're from Ireland. Now, you're the winner. You can punish Gits with that leak. You can oh, decide. Yes. If you're listening to this, Swoop is now holding the leak. We won't do it now. We'll do it during the Six Nations well, summation. We could do it yeah. now. <laughs> What, but what no, are you thinking? As in, like, he hits me or does stuff or I eat it or, or he, he can decide. It. Yeah. <laughs> so you decide, Swoop. 
Well, it depends on which end you want, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're both juicy, aren't they? Yeah. You've got a bit of time, have a think. Okay. Whether you want to flog him? Or... I'm going to just chop this Guinness. Well, chop the other, thing, other th- thought we had was that, obviously, um, the I- Irish were out in front by... Um, maybe it's a number of slaps oh. with the leak based oh, on Guinness. the points difference. Oh, across the back or something. Yeah. I mean, that's fun. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, but can, can I just ask something? Yeah. Was there supposed to be ping pong balls in this Guinness? What was the go there? Is that what the comes from? There's a ping pong ball in there. There's a ball of, of sorts, yeah. Ping pong ball? Ball of nitrogen. Ball of nitrogen. How'd they get it in there? I mean, I've seen Best balls enjoyed. getting holes before. How did they glass. get the ball in there? Must be before they close the can. Interesting. <laughs> if you work for Guinness, could you write in? Tell us how you get the ball of nitrogen in the can. It's pretty amazing. Or send us, say, 150k for promoting your shit. <laughs> That's going to spin Swoop out for the next two hours. <laughs> um, oh, hey, yeah. it is good to have you back, Swoop. Thanks, you were very good, good on the back. show. Yeah, was I? Last week. Am I sitting on Swoop? Or? <laughs> so, for those of you that missed it last week, Drew dressed up a pillow that was Swoop. And also very glad to miss it. What? You guys were so serious. You got the CEO in, like, mate, Australian mate, rugby. He's scared. It's mate, not like when you play with him, prof. he's a different guy no, now. All private, huh? He's a different guy now. Is he? The CEO, yeah, he walks around, strutting around. It was a different vibe. Mm. Anyway, glad to miss it. But I'm <laughs> glad to be back. Yeah, well, no CEOs today. Today we've got um, Andrew Kellaway. Mm. Oh, Kellers. He's been in some form. Hasn't Ooh, he? Man. Yeah. He's good. Uh, Grace Hamilton, she's coming. Yeah. She's super, super W just son. Just back from France. Yes. A little stint over at Montpellier. Oh. And going back. Yeah. Does she speak French? <laughs> uh, un petit peu. Très un petit peu. Lament so terms, but, uh, I, I heard, I heard she's learning. Yeah, that was amazing, Drew. Hey, what did I just After say? Guinness, you said the same as you. Yeah, same level as him. Hey. So he um, apparently shows. she's learning. So it might be interesting to see. You know, I don't know. If Grace, has, what you've been there? Maybe five weeks, and Drew was there five years. Whether they're <laughs> at the same level or <laughs> well, she could take Drew's line. Uh, and make everyone else do English classes as opposed to him doing French classes. Yeah. That's yeah. how fed up he was. <laughs> Is that what you did? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I was also, I kind of like, I framed it like I was helping our French teammates. So like, guys, you're going to have to fucking learn English. So like, you know, like you're gonna, you'd be able to use English anywhere you go. I can only use French here. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you're a good boy. So yeah, I was doing them a service. So you got the whole Toulon organisation to go to English well, lessons. Well, I tried to, yeah. I tried. I didn't go to French lessons. I actually used to use... Um, Paul Stridgen, uh, Bobby, our, our SNC coach, his um, his partner used to go to the, the lessons and get a little um, a little card, you know, um, clamped or whatever for every every lesson because we had to provide evidence that we were trying and learning and endeavouring oh, to right. learn the language. Or they'd snip your pay. Yeah, so I would just take um, Bobby's wife's uh, card and take it in as if I'd been doing the lessons. And, and so every every month or something, I'd provide this, and they're like. Jeez, he's doing all these lessons, but he's fucking not getting any better. <laughs> Did you learn it in Bordeaux, Swoop? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I've forgotten it, though. Long time ago. But you wasn't there long enough. Wasn't there long no, enough. No, no, not at all. But I said to Drew to enjoy his experience a bit more. He needs to learn French, so I booked him in with the tutor. He went there. Um, he didn't really enjoy it because there was a kid there, the the son of the teacher who was bilingual, and he could... He drew how bad he was at French and he was giggling like in behind him. So then he never actually went back. Yeah, I was too embarrassed by this kid. He was just sitting there watching me. And I'd, every error, he'd just giggle. And I was like, I'm fucking, I didn't come here to get heckled. So I just didn't go back. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. Very good. But well, um, our, our chef, Sabine, she, she told me that the best way to learn the language <laughs> was on the pillow. Like just shuck up with a French girl and learn Did on the pillow. Did you do that while you were there? No. Oh. That's why he doesn't speak French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't learn the language. Okay. <laughs> you gave me a look like, don't go there, James. That's, uh, <laughs> prof, that's enough. Hey, look, it's very exciting to have you back. So, you know the other reason it's ex- exciting, in particular for Gits and I? You two are turning 40, you old oh, bastards. We are. Mm. Next week. Um, and the big party this Saturday night. Hey, oh. Yep. This yeah, weekend, big yeah. party. Yeah. Good so, for me. I get to drive back up here again. <laughs> I love that drive. And then will you drive back the same night? Will you be responsible? No, or? I'm going to stay because we've got the podcast on the Monday. So it just doesn't make sense. No, mate. You're very good. It's very right. loyal to these. So Now, a lot of people don't know the story about your ages and mm-hmm. your uh, your caps for Australia. Yep. Can you enlighten them? Oh, well, yeah. I'm, I'm born the uh, 26th of March um, every year. 
<laughs> and uh, and Adam's born the 27th of March, so Every just year. One, day, one day before. And I was Wallaby number 799 and Sweet was 800. 800. So one behind. My mum's name's Karen, his mum's name's Karen. But both spelt the same, but she thinks she's a bit snobby up there on the Central <laughs> Coast and cha- change the change the accent. Is your mum's name Karen? Karen. <laughs> Karen. Yeah. But spelled as Karen. She just didn't want to be a Karen. Yeah, exactly. Late change. But you've always been one up at me, haven't you? That's why you're two no, that's why you're a bit of a two cat. You've so been a two cat. I've got I'm one name, you've got two. Say I'm seven nine nine, you know, one before and one day older than him. Who was saying to you the other day that the fact that you're number eight hundred for the wallabies could really be good for you one day? Chinese, maybe? Oh, it wasn't that's it. Yes. Was. That's right too. JC. Yes. J- yes. Yep. J C I love it. Number yeah. eight, so lucky for the Chinese people. And rugby union is massive in China. Wonder how much mm. that's worth. Well around Hong Kong you never know. Yeah. I wonder who Wallaby 888 is. Are they up that far now? They would be, yeah. I think they're, yeah, they're in the 900s, 900s now, You're yeah. kidding. That's a good mm, question. No. Yeah, we'll get into it. <laughs> no, you're not. Kelly yeah, might know. We'll ask he him. He might, actually. Uh, but what is the theme for your party on Saturday? I've still got to get uh, an It's what you want to be when you grow up. Are you coming, Prof? Yeah. yeah. I'm coming, yet. Yeah. Oh, happy And the days. missus is coming. Oh, is she? Lovely. Nice. Not anymore, based on that reaction. And all the boys, you're all coming? Yeah. Hugo, are you coming? Yep. Ollie, Tommy? Do you want to give out a couple of free passes to a couple of <laughs> listeners? We, might, we, we could probably do that. But if they so weren't kids, they'll be stopping the door. I'm down. We've cast the net pretty wide, haven't we, with our invites? Well, I don't actually know who you've invited. <laughs> yeah, neither have I. I've had a few people come up to me going, yeah, I'll see you at your party. I was like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Swoop, obviously um, in Melbourne, when it was holiday, Swoop, you invited a lot of people. Did I? You did. There was, um, yeah, hundreds and hundreds. So it'll be interesting to see who shows up. Now, uh, what's something that's happened while you've been away, Swoop? Um, have you heard about we've got a couple of sponsors on board have we um, one in particular uh, is NordVPN oh right which yeah, we're well, very we're excited about you do have a little bit of script I Just have a little re- script yeah, read it go on can yeah. we do that again uh, yeah sure um, uh, you've been away sweet <gasps> I have but I missed something we have a sponsor yes we do please tell me about NordVPN that's right, Swoop. So for the second week in a row, our good friends at NordVPN are back. Um, and I believe, gentlemen over there, you use their fantastic feature of swapping your virtual location to your benefit over the weekend. Tell me more, Gits. I did, James. It was uh, to watch the Legion, my uh, favourite MLR team, San Diego Legion. They played on the rugby network, so it was tricky, but I switched it across, uh, used NordVPN. It was amazing. Lucky that your favourite MLR team's the team you play for. Yeah, well, <laughs> if they start losing, they might not be. Uh, and you, Drew? Well, I actually use NordVPN to, to, to book cheaper flights and accommodation as the Coco Show is going on tour. Yeah. yeah. Hey, holiday swoop, you're coming back, mate. No, he's not. The boys, <laughs> we are going to Hong Kong to slay the dragon in uh, in just a few weeks' time. I think maybe just after Easter. So I, uh, Early April. Of, of That's course, where we can really test the 800. Go to the right. casino, yes. yeah. see how you go, Swoop. Mm-hmm. I'm just acting as team manager, logistics, booked us in, Cathay Pacific flights, and then we've also got the Volo Hotels looking after us. I've got the penthouse. You got, I've got the highest room number, so happy to take We that. all know Gitz has got the penthouse. Yeah, right? that's true. When I say I've got the penthouse, I've got the lounge and the penthouse. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're Gitz. So, yeah, so Ovalo, uh, you can go to, head to ovalohotels.com. Um, and there's a special offer. It'll be in the description of this show. People can get um, cheaper com there. They can mm. come and stay in the same joint as us. That's uh, Ovalo Southside, I believe. So mm. yeah, nice. get there for Save the Save a few of their hotels back yeah. in Oz. They're, they're sharp. Good joints. Yeah, they're very good. And will we need a VPN up in Hong Kong? Oh, <laughs> man. Is that where Nord Now he's finally on Nord. Now, remember to get the best discount off your Nord VPN plan. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash... The Coco Show. Our link will also give you four extra months on the two-year plan. There's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, and the link is in the podcast episode description box. So good on you, Nord VPN. No, thank you wow. for that support. That's good. Oh, absolutely. It's fantastic. You're thank good you, there. I'm a, I'm a bit worried about uh, Hong Kong for a number of reasons. How will holidays... Is that because of holiday uh, swoop? Uh, holiday uh, swoop being one of them. I, I don't think uh, I'll have a voice again by the uh, live record on Sunday. I don't know how we get around it. Yeah. So you know what we do is you just the last two <laughs> nights, say forty eight hours, just don't talk. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. silent. Just nodding. I, I really tried in Melbourne and then oh, no, but, but that's then Saturday all we thought. night it just yeah. sort of the boat went out a bit too far. I think also when we look back at the footage, 
We were all screaming a fair oh, bit. It yeah. was it was a tough. Everywhere watch was loud. It was like projecting story. your voice the whole time. Yeah, Jesus, yeah. it was a lot of fun. And uh, I think you show so much character. You push through. People love it. Okay. I love it. Okay. Thanks. So just yeah. lose it. And it is a big thanks to Hong Kong Tourism Board. Of course, yeah. For looking after us. Um, I'm sure we'll find a way. There'd be some old uh, sort of Chinese medicine over there, some tiger <laughs> penis or something like that. Or sure, I mean, if something it's going to help the throat. <laughs> Anything to help the throat. Uh, hey, socials, where can you find us? On X and Insta, kickoffs at kickoffs kickons. On YouTube, at kickoffs and kickons. On TikTok, at kickoffs kickons uh, and anywhere where you get your podcast from um, lots of people watching listening it's growing very quickly are we TikToking? are we absolutely um, good point now uh, the challenge 50,000 subscribers on YouTube we're up to 8,500 15 weeks to go okay just a reminder uh, plugs uh, extra name on your surname uh, doing a show <laughs> nude and neck tat for the goit that says Coco. I thought so it was we'll see just how we a go. Tat. To... So when, we're, move, we're not well, moving that quickly. You could go here. No. Yeah. And then it just no, goes it's not, it's not going that quick, to be honest. Um, <laughs> all right. Hey, the last thing we're going to do, um, just we're about to get into, I believe Andrew Kellaway is about to join us. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, but before we do, I hope he's waiting and he's just. There's been a lot of people writing into us um, who have. They want to. They've found stuff that the vision and you know photos of you guys from years gone by. Very famous guys that <laughs> you are. Somebody wrote this one in. Oh yeah, um, I remember this. Yeah, and they want you to explain this vision. If you if you, I'm going to talk over the top of it for those of you listening. Somebody has sent this video in. It's actually Drew. Why don't you talk through it? Well, basically, yeah, it's just <laughs> a, a good little gag. It was from Swoop. Yeah, Swoop. <laughs> He put my suitcase upside down but undid the zip. So when I grabbed my suitcase at Melbourne Airport, it was. Everything came out of it. It's because at the other end, I think we're flying from Sydney to to Melbourne. (laughs) It was a great stitch up and I had a few things in there I didn't want too many people to see. Yeah. But um, earlier, I got him a, <laughs> earlier I got him a Subway and, and laced it with jalapenos and because he can only go to Lemon and Herb at the Nando scale of hotness and so he was filthy. So to get me back, that's what, uh, that's what he did. I remember room with you and the last thing, like late at night, you'd go in for a shower and I'd always get up first. It was like my role. I'd set the alarm, say, swoop, let's go, and I'd get in the shower first. And you turn it on. <laughs> yeah. He'd turn the hose. On, so you're not thinking about it, but he, turn, he turns it onto jet and then it faces your head. As soon as you turn the shower on first thing in the morning, the water's just going, <laughs> bang. Well, you got to be on. The first day, he always gets you, and then you get used well, you to swoop. swoop the king of the Everyone pranks, loves or? a stitch up. Well, you, you, got, you got uh, hit yeah. with one down in Melbourne, the old uh, bin of water leaning against the door, knock on your door, and then it floods your you feet. You two filming, having a little laugh. Yeah. I got him. You did get me. I miss those times. Yeah. Well, we'll hey, Hong Kong. Yeah, I know. We'll get back into it. Hey, we do have our first special guest joining us now. The superb rugby over the weekend was absolutely magnificent. I'm sure you all watched. Um, six cracking games. I watched every minute. Uh, this gentleman, uh, let me introduce him first, and then we'll talk about the game he took part in. Uh, our first guest this week is a testament to hard work, perseverance, and true grit. After forging a treacherous path in the leafy and mansion-lined streets of Hunters Hill to then battling the hallways of the prestigious private school, Scott College, it is a miracle that he has gotten to the level he is at today. Uh, please pour yourself a glass of red, make sure the curtains match the drapes, and give a big <laughs> cheer for the Coco Show's favourite bucket ass, Andrew <laughs> Kells. Oh, Kellaway. Hey. <laughs> Kells. Oh, Thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks for having me, lads. Repping the Ramwick jersey as well after they went down yeah. on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no fair weather here, mate. How's it going? How's Melbourne? Yeah, yeah, going well. It's hot down here. It's hot down here. So it, um, it's nice, finally. A bit of heat. Summer's been late this year, so going well. Uh, thanks for joining us to chat a little bit of sur- superb rugby, as we like to call it. Um, unfortunately, you guys went down to the Reds 53-26 on the weekend, but uh, you jagged yourself a lovely little try. Um, how are the boys feeling after that one? Yeah, yeah, as expected, that was a tough one. Um, probably a little bit of a, a flashback to round one for us. I think we were we were sort of bashed physically there to start with and then chasing, chasing our ass for the rest of the game. So, um, you know, it's always hard to... Hard to look at those things um, positively, but at the same time, you know, you score 26 points and, um, you know, if, if I don't throw a, an absolute shocker of a pass over the top, um, which leads to an intercept and, and a couple other sort of pretty soft tries, I think we're sort of right in that game. So, um, yeah, our morale's pretty flat, but, um, you know, best thing about rugby, we go again 
go again this week. I just want to take it back a little bit. What was the morale like, um, you know, through that preseason after the World Cup experience? But then, uh, you know, what have you done to try and get yourself back up uh, for this superb season? Because, mate, you've been in some form. Yeah, look, it was um, it was actually really nice to come back to club footy after after the World Cup. I think it was, um, you know, we've all spoken enough about that and, and hopefully put that to bed. Oh, no, but, um, I don't want to put it to bed yet. Yeah, I want no, to get no, your no. real thoughts on Eddie. Yeah. Drew, of all people, I think you should put it to bed, mate. <laughs> We'll we'll put it to bed after this. Okay, okay, yeah. Look, no, coming back to club footy is great. I think um, you know we've got a great group down here, and um, yeah, it was nice. It was nice to get back into preseason. We haven't, as you as you guys would know, you don't you don't get to do them that often with with the um, spring tour and that sort of stuff. So to actually do a preseason was, um, I mean, it sucked, but it was a good thing at the same time. And I think the the consequence um, on a personal level, um, feeling feeling great to start the season. Kellers, Swoopy, how are you, mate? Hey, yeah, well, good, Drew was talking about superb form, mate. You've been in great form. Um, congratulations on your performances so far. But you've you've done a little bit of uh, swapping and changing from the wing to fullback. Is there? A, I'm not going to ask you what position you prefer, but given recent form, is where, where do you feel most comfortable and where you can contribute the most? Uh, yeah, well, the two. I reckon they're two questions. Where do I feel most comfortable? Um, well, actually, no, they're the same question. Yeah, no, fullback, both, I think. I think. <laughs> do, you, do you want to ask yourself so the question? That's where you want to play. Yeah, fullback, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, look, at the moment, um, that being said, though, um, you know, I've been a, a big sort of bang the utility back drum and said how, how valuable being versatile is. So if, you know, if I'm, if I'm shouting that from the rooftops and then complaining about, about playing different positions, that would be, that would be a bit stupid. So, um, you know, I'm sort of at the point now where, where I'm happy to just, just play. But, yeah, look, if I got to pick, uh, I'd be picking fullback. Kills, sorry, no, I've, I've heard some vicious rumours. Um, but <laughs> Here we go. You, you ba- no, no, this one's, this one's not too bad. But you, is, is there a player that you've ever based your game on or someone that you looked up to, anyone that's really changed <laughs> how you've approached rugby? Yeah, yeah, Matt Carrara. <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> Carfe. Uh, no, no, it's um, Swoop won't remember this, but a long time ago now, back before he had the greys growing in his sideburns, he um, <laughs> he sat me down at the Tars and, and talked me through pretty much rugby top to bottom. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was lucky I got to grow up watching you blokes, so it was great. Was that was that sober Swoop or was that holiday Swoop? Because he's got a similar experience with Sterling Mortlock when he <laughs> made him cry on a mad Monday and he thought it changed. You know, he changed his mindset of working hard and getting better. Was it sober swoop or holiday swoop? Uh, it was early Monday morning swoop, so he's probably, I don't know, he's sort of between sober and <laughs> sober and Tuesday. Yeah. Dust, dusty swoop. What, what did you do to yeah, get him yeah. to talk? Because we're still trying to struggle <laughs> with that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It was a long time ago. I think he felt bad for me. So, Kels, we had written in here that it was actually Drew Mitchell that turned your rugby career around. Um, I've got That's a quote direct one. from you here. The reason why it didn't happen was because of me. I wanted to play fullback. I didn't want to play wing. He, Mitchell, said, look, I see a lot of myself in you and I would love to catch up and see if there's any advice or anything I could help you with. Did, did he never catch up with you? Or? <laughs> no, he did. He did. He came down to Coogee, um, down to God's country and had a coffee. Um, and again, like I've talked a heap about um, that period of, of my career. I was... Um, oh, geez, I was a bastard. Um, just, yeah needed uh i needed someone to sort of um well probably more than one person um to help me out there and and drew extended um extended his services and and offered them out of the blue so um yeah another another uh, thing i'm eternally grateful for there drew no you're welcome mate no you're absolutely killing it now we had to prod him for that thank you yeah yeah that's all right (laughs) i actually thought the first one was me i was like oh it's a bit flat (laughs) get the the feel that that was a bit of a drew spray like were you quite brutal with no, your no, feedback? No, no, no. I just went down and have a bit of chat. Because I, I, I had the similar sort of thing. I, I was a fullback going through my you know, this, uh, early career, but then Chris Latham was at fullback and went into the wing and thought like it was almost like I was getting dropped in a sense because I felt like I was more of a fullback. But then I think once you sort of have a few games where you feel like you can still swing a game or have an influence on a game, then you, it kind of changes your perspective on the position and, and what you can do. Now, obviously, Kels, you've heard from Swoop and uh, Drew back in the day giving you advice. Gits, this is your chance, mate. Any advice from D- you to, down the barrel? Down the barrel from you to Kels. Don't listen to Swoop. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say don't retire, mate. 
Oh no, don't do that either. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of things. We need more than just one message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Kels, there's a, we've been getting this. Um, we've been meeting with a few people late, lately, um, high-ranking officers in the world of Australian rugby, and they keep saying there's a problem, which is that the public don't really know the true super rugby player. Right, mm. like they used to, and you so mean like their personalities and things. Their personalities, what makes them tick, what gets them up in the morning, what gets them going, what turns them on, all that stuff. Oh. Yes. So I typed into Google, how do we find? What's the best way to find out about people? And we came back with a little survey, Kels. If you're just humorous, it's called the Cosmopolitan <laughs> 200 Funny Questions to Get to Know Your Dates. Um, uh, so I, I figured for this we could be like you're going on a date with the four of us. And we could just run a few questions to get to know you. Are you happy with that? Yeah, right. I'll let you pin. Come on. Oh, did you, mate. Nice. I'll start. You go. What's the one thing you hope your parents never find out about you? <laughs> or what's the one, the most embarrassing thing your parents have ever caught you doing? <laughs> oh, come on. Really? <laughs> one in the same. Well. I'm squeaky clean. I'm squeaky clean. Like At the that. moment. It's, uh, no, it'd have to be the same for, for everyone. Wouldn't it? Like your parents catching you. Catching you bringing people home? Oh, that's disgusting, mate. No, no, no. <laughs> we've not done that. Oh, I, 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 that was so different to where I thought you were yeah, going. Yeah, when you said we're same for everyone, but with another person, yeah, that's a good shout. Um, <laughs> you want to go next? Luke? Sure, I'll go next. Andrew, <laughs> what kind of drunk are you? Chatty over Shara? Sobbing, disaster? Messy babe who lives for chaos? And do you sleep on the first date? Oh wow! Does that was that in the questions? No, it wasn't. I just threw it in there. Yeah, I didn't read that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the first one, the first one, the oversharer. Oversharer, chatterbox. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good talk underwater. Uh, my go. What's your guilty pleasure? Have you got one? Ah, <laughs> uh, guilty pleasure. Oh, he had one. <laughs> yeah, there's one there. Yeah. There's he's, one he's, there. He's trying to find the second one. <laughs> yeah, far out. Yeah, we're going down third on the list or something. Ah, uh, guilty pleasure. I'm a I'm a sweet tooth, like bad sweet tooth. Blow out around the hips, like Drew. <laughs> <laughs> really? What's your What's your poison there? At the moment, it was you know those Allen's raspberries with the chocolate around them. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Had them. Geez, they were awesome. And then now just into the Daryl Lee. Daryl Lee's making a comeback. Ras- Daryl Lee. I thought they're gone. Yeah. As in terms of the chocolate no, no. bullets, raspberry chocolate bullets. No, no, no. They're like um, you know, in the party mix, Allen's have a raspberry. Yeah. Yeah, and then that wrapped in chocolate. Oh, wow. geez, that is good. Yeah. Okay. You got to go there, yeah. Goy? I think it's strange, but yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, mine, there's so much here. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, would you rather be 15% more attractive or 50% smarter? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go with attractive. I need all the help I can get on. <laughs> Good you, choice. You just have to dye your hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tried that. I tried that, and then the beard goes red. They got to dye the hair and the beard. Sweet. What do you? What would you go? What? Fifteen percent. I'm sorry, man. I'm too busy. Well, we know the answer exclusive. there, mate. Fifty <laughs> percent of nothing, Thank still you, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, girls. Did you or do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you? Any experiences? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. In. Uh, uh, Lionel Lee, actually, Lionel Lee of Bingley, <laughs> in his house, was staying the night, and there was 100% um, corroborated by multiple people. There was a ghost in there for sure. Well, wow. Why were you staying at Bing- Bingley's house? <laughs> can, they, can you get <laughs> it? His, his were son, they sponsors? Uh, mate of mine. Oh. He's what? His son was a mate of mine. Oh, right. Mate, what's yeah, Yenda yeah, like? Yeah. Is she hot? <laughs> <laughs> I never met Yenda. She sounds hot. Wasn't high enough up the food chain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we take it back to footy? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, you want it? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go on. Uh, who are you playing this weekend, mate? Let's have a look. <laughs> who who got, have they got this? Uh, Hurricanes. Hurricanes. In, yeah. Um, oh, top of the north. table, Hurricanes. Um, they are four from four. Um, how are you going to beat the Hurricanes? Kells, what are you talking about in your meetings? <laughs> yeah, mate. They're playing, they're playing good footy. Um, big line speed team. A big, big line speed team in defence. So for us, we've got to sort of um, find a way to... To punch punch holes in them in tight and, and turn their, their edges around and, and stop the line speed. So um, for us, it'd be putting our putting our forwards to work through the middle there. Mate, what about uh, Naholo on the wing for them? He's an absolute unit. What about him? Uh, he's the size of his thick hips, really yeah. thick hips. Um, yeah, well, I mean, hopefully he's not playing this weekend, but he's um, mate, he's in he's in good form. He's, he's tough to deal with. And you got Carter Gordon, obviously 
lot spoken about him after the World Cup. Uh, but coming back, it looks like he's really found his groove. He's got a lot of confidence. Uh, how have you seen him the first you know, three rounds of Super Rugby? Superb Rugby, sorry. <laughs> yeah, mate, he's been good. He's been good. He's, um, he's a confident guy. And, and um, this year, making sort of a concerted effort to give him give him heaps of heaps of rope and, and take the reins and um, do that without any any fear of, of um, failure or anyone coming down his down his channel. It's, it's his show, and um, you know he's doing a great job, sort of running that at the moment. Now, Kels, you're obviously in the Wallabies system. Uh, are you pretty pumped to have Joe Schmidt here? <laughs> yep. Yep, absolutely. It's, uh, it's certainly... <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yep, yep, yep. It's definitely... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, after the after the last hit, it, it's, um, you know, hopefully it's a good one. Mm. Mate, well, how's things been, um, you know, obviously a fair bit going on off the field with the Rebels. Um, you know, as a, as a leader down there, what, is it, what have you guys done to sort of just make sure the boys stay focused and the task at hand when you're actually at footy and worry about the other stuff when you're away from it? Yeah, I mean, there's, oh, geez, there's heaps happening. Every week something seems to sort of pop up that we didn't know about or, or that's changed. So, um, again, I think I said a couple of weeks ago, we've been super lucky. Our, our staff have been um, unbelievably proactive in keeping us separate from the from the business side of things. So, obviously, um, all that stuff's happening. And truth be told, we, we don't even really know how half of it works, um, let alone what it means. So, so in that sense, ignorance, ignorance has been bliss and, has sort of kept us away from it, but but all the stuff that has happened, insofar as um, you know, administrators in the building and, and staff being sacked and, and leaving, um, as much as those things suck, we we actually haven't haven't seen that much of it. So, you know, we haven't had to talk about it a great deal. Obviously, nothing's really moved in the last um, sort of month, as far as as far as we're aware. So, um, really, as soon as the season started, it was um, it actually wasn't that hard. Um, and once you answer all the initial questions, we're able to get through it pretty quickly and. Um, as I said, I, I don't reckon half the group, myself included, even really understand how it all works, which which has been a blessing. But have you been paid? <laughs> yeah, mate, I've, I've been paid. I wouldn't have turned up otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little bit too much rugby, don't you reckon? Oh, go for it, sweet. Killers, <laughs> Killers, where are you fucking bagpipes? Where are they, mate? Given by the whiteboard at your back, I'm guessing they're, they're not at uh, at reach. No, they're in the in the living room. Well, go right. and get them. The Does he play them? Does he yeah. play the bagpipes? Mate, 100% he plays Kels, the pipes. Kels, go get the bagpipes. Oh, prof, you would you love really that. Your I'm, missus I'm, is Scottish. Oh, she's sick for a bagpipe. <laughs> you really play this? Yeah, mate, we really yeah. like you too. Make sure you you're can. home for that. All right, All right we're going to chat quickly between yeah, ourselves. We'll, we'll talk while you go get them. Yeah. Um, right, I'll be two seconds on You know what's really confusing here is that he's at home. He's got a whiteboard behind his back. Yeah. You just find that weird? I mean, there's yeah, been a, a few so sessions where you'd like a white ball when you think you've got a few good <laughs> ideas going on. Right, is that where we're going to start? <laughs> oh, I like that. That's once after the kickoffs and you're at the kick on stage and you get all these yeah. great ideas and you want to start oh. whiteboarding them. Is um, that what your notes are for on your phone? Oh, no, it's better visually just to see it all. And just like, it's like, it's like, it's like you good little hunting. You nuts with a whiteboard. <laughs> Love a whiteboard. So you how did you know, know that he in the sucks on the pipes? No, blows on the pipes. Blows, yeah. Sucks and blows, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that how it gets? Both. You should know. Oh, yeah. here we go. Oh, no way. Here we go. Obviously, a lot of people play saxophones before they make love. Do you ever pull out the bagpipes <laughs> <laughs> to get anybody uh, in the mood? True true story. The last time these bagpipes were played was at Brendan McKibben's Buck Party. Oh, wow. and what was the song of choice? Uh, it was it was Flower of Scotland because he was... Um, He's a Scot. We were joking about his Scottish eligibility. Yeah, he's in a little. Um, he's Are you in a kidding? Little well, he, he was eligible for Scotland, and then he was uh, he's caught over late on a Wallaby tour, and I think they put him on the bench for the final game of tour. Didn't get on, but because he's on the bench, he could never play for Scotland after that. Oh man! Oh really? Yeah. I thought you got to get no, on the because field. he's named on twenty three. You kidding? Now, yeah. uh, Kels, we are running out of time. We've got uh, Grace Hamilton next, but I thought, why don't you almost like the Oscars? Why don't you play yourself off? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've just checked the actual, um, the, the read is broken. Like, they don't even work anymore. So, oh, so what does no. that mean? So they're not going to work. Just a, try. Can you have a crack without a read or yeah. no? Well, what will happen is, and I'll give you a little lesson here, the air will just come straight out. So, he, he, so. this is how we do this, Kels. You just suck on it and we'll add <laughs> the music in post. Yeah. So just yeah. make it look like it's you're playing. Become- and it's then become a meme real quick. Uh, well, we just got one final question. Adam just um, brought it up when you were going to get the bagpipes. You're at home, yeah? Yeah, yeah, in Melbourne. W- why do you have a whiteboard? 
this is my study. This is where the um, the magic happens in it. Right. As you can see, there's been heaps happening on the whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's blank for Pretty those magic. of you listening. You know like He's ahead of the game. Yeah. He's playing and still studying. Yeah. Imagine doing that swoop. You, two things at once. <laughs> what? <laughs> no chance. No. All right, Kels, just pop them up to your mouth and we'll add the music in, Hugo, in post. And, and do your little march thing that they do. And <laughs> this is If you're listening, <laughs> no, you've got to watch no this. No chance, mate. <laughs> go on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> we trained today. <laughs> and there we go. Oh. oh, wow. No. Oh, that's... Oh, he's blowing up the bag. There you go. Oh, it's a nice bag too. Mm. Like for lure. <laughs> That's great. Um, Swade, mate. Swade. Uh, uh, and was that some Run DMC? What was that? That was great. <laughs> okay. Hey, Kels, DC, thanks for joining us. Good luck against the Canes on the weekend. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, good luck. Thanks, mate. No, thanks very much, mate. And uh, just stay in that nice vein of form that you're in. No, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Thanks, Drew. Kels, there you go, mate. One of the mm. great... Yeah. He's a good fella. Yeah, one of the great. And can play the pipes. Loves a pipe. Yeah, yeah. we're uh, going to be sucking a pipe this weekend, bro. Are we? Yeah. How? Well, well like cigar costumes. Of course. Oh, what are the costumes? Not telling. Well, well, not telling. We'll get but you have gone themed together. Yeah, well, it's our birthday together. Yeah, I know. But I thought. But remember, he's one day around. older. Yeah. But did you did you guys invite your wives to this one or not? <laughs> Is it just the two we, of you? We don't have wives. Or oh, he has a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a wife. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, are you going to have a barbecue at your birthday party? Uh, I, I, you know what? I am now because this week the good people at Beef Eater have just sent over a grill. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> That's right. We have another sponsor. Oh, the they're show coming is going out great. everywhere. Really? People love it. <laughs> We're really? on for another few more weeks. Well, we are Neville Bartos for life. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> It's wonderful. We've, and we've got a new segment attached to the brand new sponsorship from oh, Beef Eater. Yeah. It's called Super Sizzler. Let's do Super Sizzler. Super Sizzler. Brought to you by Beef Eater. Life tastes better outdoors. <laughs> Basically, the idea is that you guys have got to pick your Super Sizzler from the superb rugby from the weekend. Um, lots went on. I can give you the scores real quick if you want. Mm. Yeah. Um, let it. me give them to you. Here we go. Hurricanes, 14, defeated the Crusaders, 10. Yep. Moana, they, uh, Moana Pacifica, they defeated the Force, 14. Great game. The Brums, they got it done against the Highlanders. Castle oh, behind yes. over there. Can I tell you who was sizzling from the Brums? If you want it, yes. Our boy, the Tool Shed. Oh, yeah. the Tool Man. You see that? Timmy O. That guy's got genuine Corey Jets. Tool. Yeah. Is he in your Wallabies, 15? He's got to be. He's in contention. Ooh. He's in contention. But he's in mine. Not, let's not give it to him just yet. Okay. No, I'm happy to. Why not, mate? He's the tool shed. Mate. No, yeah. mate do everything. I went to the tool shed today, actually, on Did Oxford you? Street. It's a uh, adult store. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What were you picking up there, Drew? A few tools. <laughs> For the weekend? <laughs> For the weekend. Did you yeah, get fantastic. me one? Yeah, well, we're going together. Good. Chiefs 46 defeated the Druid 29. Yeah, Drew. Uh, Chiefs are looking red hot. I yeah, thought the Drew looked the really Chiefs. good too for yeah, large yeah. parts of that game. Absolutely. Uh, Blues 12 defeated the Warriors 10. Sorry, the Waratahs the, 10. Yeah. The Warriors? Yeah. Go the, the Waratahs. Waratahs, yeah. no. Waratahs. Uh, any super round sizzlers in there that you want to give? Who was hot? Well, you didn't mention the Reds. Sorry, apologies. And the Reds 53 defeated the Rebels 26. I was about to say, my sizzling. I think we might what was be. It? Super sizzler. Super my sizzler. super sizzler. Fraser you McWright. You beat feet a super sizzler. <laughs> Fraser McWright. He can do no Mc wrong. I thought since he's come on our show, he's been fantastic. He's just, he's a really good link man. And I don't know, he just seems like he's really enjoying his football and fits the mold of what Les is doing for him. Yeah, like he gets that many turnovers. Just like when I, on my beef feeder grill, just turn over my sausages. It's like Fraser McWright turning it over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Very good. Like so that. is your superb uh, look, sizzler? I, was go- I, I spoke to you before yeah. the show and I was going to go with Fraser McWright, not McRon. And no. Gordy's on the same We're page. We're both McWright. Yeah. I think he's the future of Australian rugby. And yours is what? The tool shed? The tool shed, yeah. Who's Funnily yours, enough, I had to tune in from that game from interstate and had to put on my Nord VPN <laughs> to watch that? it from... Where were you? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> I went interstate, actually. Did you? Yeah. Oh, you did? Just a quick one. Uh, uh, brothers... Of Brisbane got over Ramwick in the Australian Club uh, Championship over the weekend. Uh, went up there to support uh, Kirtley Bill. Uh, is his first game uh, under trying circumstances. Yeah, very well been, done. Been a tough uh, year for him, but then also uh, lost his brother on the Thursday. His younger brother William. So um, may he rest in peace. But also just uh, yeah, got up there on flew up Saturday morning and watched uh, watched Kirtley play. Mate, he just played so well for a guy that's been out for fourteen months or so. Uh, Dealing with the stuff he's been dealing with uh, in, in the last few days, let alone that period of time, 
Uh, it was just great to see him out there and, and also to see the smile back on his face afterwards. But uh, it was a great day out there at Crosby Park. Um, you know, grassroots footy, as we know, is uh, absolutely alive and well. And um, the powers to be up there at Rugby Australia just need to find a way to convert that energy into the game, into the professional side as well. well you know you made... Sorry, Prof. No, you but you made the coverage because it was covered by Stan, mm. but they just didn't mention you. Yeah, I, I think there's probably some words in pre-production meetings about not not mentioning me or us such a shame you look great did i yeah you had a great northern in your hand yes talking with mark chisholm yeah big chiz yep good yeah, on you was up there, yeah. about right. well why don't i make my super sizzler thanks to beef eater i'll make it kb curtly beer yeah. yeah yes yeah, yeah. Well done. Fantastic. What a great uh, segment. And thanks to Beefeater for coming on board. Just a reminder, the weather is still cracking in Australia. You heard that from Kells down in Melbourne. Mm. Wonderful weather. It is still barbecuing weather. So get out there and buy a Beefeater. If you love this show and you want it to keep going this weekend, go and buy 10 fucking barbecues. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) From Beefeater. From Beefeater. Yeah. yeah. It must be Beefeater. Absolutely. Thank you for getting on board. Um, Hey. The other thing is it's a big thanks to Appliances Online. As yeah. we know, they provided the set. They've been mm. very helpful to us. They also, the Oliveri Sink, which now houses our Guinness and our other beers, they provided that. And they also were the link for Beefeater. So a big thanks to Appliances Online. They've been helping us a yeah. lot. Why do they help us? Why well, because they they're us? winning, mate. Do they, they They don't have a connection with a cold plunge? I mean, we've been pushing we, this barrel for a while, they haven't They said to me that they've sent it. And that this is it. That's the one. This is the cold plunge. So yeah, okay. I noticed you dodged. You said other beers. We we kind of gave better beer a plug last week. What are they doing? Well, we're getting off Guinness. The radar? A, well, better beer we haven't heard from. The head of sales is away. You're okay. talking about Traveller. Traveller. No. We've got yeah. We've got a good link there. Traveller might come on board. The the light beer you're drinking at the moment. They're no chance. So we won't <laughs> mention them. No, they don't tell good. them that we're drinking light beer. No, no, no. The colour. Right. Sorry, it's not light. This is a light. We're, yeah, it's definitely not light. I mean, just because you're drinking. But we're not Guinness. driving home. No, we're definitely not. No, Guinness. If you want to come on board, I've heard you. have been... Oh my, just Guinness. Give us cash. All right. <laughs> that's superb rugby, but it's not the only thing that's going on at the moment. The superb W started on the weekend mm. as mm-hmm. well. Uh, some cracking games in that one, uh, and one of the superstars is about to join us. Let me get into this intro. Our next guest on the Coco Show was born in a city that is known for growing apples but is ironically named Orange. (laughs) She is a barnstorming back rower that eats willing defenders for breakfast. She has played for the Waratahs, the Wallaroos, Montpellier, a brief stint of the Roosters, but now she calls the Melbourne Rebels home. Not only is she a warrior on the field, but she is a true champion for women's sport off it. So ladies and gentlemen, please, please welcome the Puniara Punisher, the one and only Grace Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. Gracie. Did I say Puniara right then, Grace? No, Panuara. Oh, <laughs> close. Geez. What is that? We've got to put it on the map. It's like where I grew up, the area. It's like west of Orange. Yeah, right. And how many people live there? 50, you know. More apples. Nothing in there. We've got to get them on the map then. Yeah, yeah, let's get them on the map. Get them to 52. <laughs> <laughs> P- Puniara? Is it, no, Panuara. Oh, Panuara. Panuara. Going, is it P-U-N, is it? Yeah. P-A-N? Well, then why are you P-A-N. saying pun? <laughs> we know why he says Pum. He's not a very good reader <laughs> I, I always thought I was a good reader You yeah. should see how nervous I am reading to my kids at night now <laughs> They're going to heckle me So Grace, welcome Thank you so much for joining us Great first weekend of uh, Superb W um, did you, How'd you fare? You, unfortunately you went down But how's the body? Yeah, good Look, I got two black eyes Tried to cover up But um, yeah Body's a bit sore, but exciting to be in a new team. Obviously, just got back from France like last week. So, learning how everything's going down here in Melbourne. It's a bit hot, actually, in Melbourne. Didn't realise it was such a hot area. But, um, yeah, it's been really fun. Well, talk us through that. How was your stint in, in, uh, in France? And um, are you ready to go straight off the plane? Uh, I don't know if I was, but we did go straight off the plane into playing into a trial match. So, yeah, that was fun. Uh, blow the cobwebs out and just get to know the girls because I probably knew about three people down here. So all new girls, there's a few internationals, um, which is exciting. But, yeah, it's been fun. Been a whirlwind. Yeah, you you spoke about that being a bit of a challenge. Any other challenges transitioning from the Waratahs to Montpellier, back to the Rebels? You know, three obviously different cultures. Apart from getting to know your teammates, is there any other challenge that, you know, you're finding difficult? Yeah, I think uh, probably coming from France as you guys would know. Uh, it's a lot faster game, a lot of quick line-outs, a lot of kicking, chasing, offloads. So 
getting back into like the Australian structure of how we play here is probably my biggest challenge at the moment. Grace, you told me through the week the biggest challenge was not having Rosé at lunchtime before you go back to training. <laughs> Come on. I know. Look, that was also a benefit of France. You have Rosé in the sun in the at lunchtime and then go to training. And you, uh, my sister was saying that you get three games on, one game off. Is that how the season would work over there? You, you get yeah, away a bit? Yeah. Did you get to experience Europe and have a lot of fun over there? Yeah, I think that's the best thing about being down there. Um, obviously, in Montpellier, it was not, it was a bit sunnier than a lot of other places we went to up in Lille and Paris. But, um, yeah, we'd play like three games and then have one week off, and they thought that that was a big season. I know for you guys over there, you play like 32 games, but for us it was a bit different. So went to the French Riviera, went over to Italy and, and things like that. So it was, it was really exciting, and I have some family in London, so got over there to see them as well. And did you learn any French while you were there? I heard you were trying to learn French. Yeah, I did. I was in classes over there. So the club actually put us in the classes. Um, I went four times a week. So. Wow. Well, four let's, let's, times a week. Let's test this out. Gitz, can you say <laughs> something in French? Yeah. And then Grace has to guess what it is. Cause, no. No, well, because Drew was there for... Four or five years. Four or five years. And Gitz is under the suspicion that your <laughs> your French might be better than Drew's. Mm. Is there something you can say, Gitz? Uh, okay. Um, tu peux me donner un stylo, s'il vous plaît. Can you please give me your pen? Perfect. Wow. I knew that. Uh, no, yes. you didn't. I That's what that. I wanted to I do. I knew that because I knew Stilo was pen. I just thought, you know what, he's asking for a pen. <laughs> Have you got one for Drew? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, nah, don't. Not, uh, no, uh, I'm better than that. Come on, guys. Yeah. Don't try and hang me out. <laughs> really test me. Test me. Um, oh, um... Give, give him some nighttime French because his nighttime French is very good. Yeah, yeah I know. You know, I know. Je peux un bouté de rosé, s'il vous plaît. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all that. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm good, guys. I'm I think he's go. good. Je peux un bouté he's good on that one. Yeah. Um, You're also very good at telling blokes where to go. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. What's yeah. that one mean? Well, you don't want to know what that good. is. Right, That's Grace, did you know what that one meant? I didn't know, even catch it. What did you say? Va tu faire un coulé. Oh, True. It's yes. It's, yeah. yes. Yeah, you don't say that. Don't say that. Okay. I don't really think I want to translate. And apologies to our many French listeners, <laughs> ex French listeners. Uh, so, Grace, what I wanted to ask you um, I love my rugby league, as we all do. Um, what was your stint at the Roosters like? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, obviously, I had a few friends there that came, I had played rugby union with. So, for me, going to play with them was um, really exciting. And I just was an injury cover because one of the girls got um, injured. So, yeah, it was a learning curve, but it was it was also really fun. I don't know if being a back rower and liking to be in the breakdown and stuff, it was probably my best games. But, um, yeah, it's definitely something that I really enjoyed and the support around the game was awesome too. Well, anyway, we're big up in su- superb W, so prison rugby can stay on the shelf for a little while. <laughs> no, uh, no <laughs> I, I want to know about the, um, the program that they run there for the um, – What's it? The NRLW and the Super Super W. What's the the differences there? Can you? Is there a lot that Australian rugby could learn from rugby league or vice versa? No, it's actually pretty similar. Like in that sort of regard, um, there's probably just more support about life. Like they really want to help in probably your mental health and then in getting you a job and like the connections and networking outside of rugby because they're very aware that it's probably not forever and for women it's probably in very much the amateur state so getting you like probably across the line and and getting you a regular income is probably their main priority for you yeah nice and what about your decision to to come back to oz and play for the rebels you've been a long time waratah but uh why was it that you went to the rebels um they were really supportive of me uh playing rugby in france Mm -hmm. and going back there to obviously try and play the finals as well so for me, that was really important um, and probably just a little bit of a change. I've been in, I'm from country New South Wales. I went to uni in Canberra, so I actually did play for the Brumbies as well. And um, it's just been really fun um, being able to do something different and, and playing with different sort of girls as well. And it's obviously a different style for me. So, yeah, it was exciting. You mentioned the Brumbies there. Uh, you've got the opportunity to play in the Brumbies this weekend. Uh, the Rebels have never had a win. And I know this was obviously... A carrot as well. You want to get there, um, change the culture a little bit, and get them winning. This opportunity this weekend, you you see as a game that you guys can win. 
Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm kind of the person that goes into every game uh, looking to win. I'm not a very good loser. Uh, but, yeah, obviously, we need to get our campaign back on track. We didn't really give much away when we played the Western Force, so maybe that's a good thing. Uh, we didn't play how we wanted to play. So, for us, yeah, we've got to get our campaign moving forward and hopefully we can solidify some good points um, this weekend. But it'll be a challenge. Uh, we're all obviously a new combinations and things like that, people playing different positions. So, yeah, let's no go. doubt, No doubt you've already marked the calendar for the weekend you play the Waratahs. <laughs> I want to know... Who are you looking forward to play the most? Have you got? Is there a target there? Mm. Basically, what I'm asking is, who annoyed you the most at the Tars yeah. when you played with them, and your one opportunity to go back at them? I don't know. I actually was thinking about this the other day because a lot of them were like, "Oh, I don't want to play you. Like it's going to be so strange." And obviously, there's some of my best mates, but come on, give us some dirt. Yeah, I come think on, you want to smack your mates. Pop it up. Come, come, come on. Yeah. Uh, not that. I think I'd be excited to see how Emily Robinson goes like i think she'll try and give horse, me some chat. Nice. yeah yeah so horse probably give me some chat on the field which will be really funny she was good on the weekend too mm. very good scrum still at the back of the rock which was funny um but yeah i um i'm pretty excited about horse because she's like one that's like i don't want to play you it's gonna be so strange but she's so competitive yeah and like waratahs is like be all end all for her so that'll be pretty fun but I don't know. I think I'll give some a little bit of a stick, a little bit of niggle to them as well, so it'll be fun. Nice. Yeah. It's going to be good to watch. Now, Grace, we're trying a few different segments uh, on this show this week, <laughs> and one that um, Tommy's come up with, is it's called the Tight Five with Grace. It's five quick fire questions, um, and just do your best. Shoot them back at us. We'll see how we go. Okay. What is your take on the appointment of Joe Yap as the first full-time and female coach of the Wallaroos? Exciting opportunity. Um, I think it's good to have a female in there, and... I don't know. I haven't really. I don't really know much about her, so we'll see what happens. Very good answer. Will you do better than the boys and make it out of the pool stages at next year's <laughs> Rugby World Cup in England? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy. <laughs> you are known for folding opponent players at will. Which one of these three ex Wallabies on the couch here on the show would you like to fold the most? Ooh. What about who would be the easiest? Oh, we know I'd be the easiest. <laughs> No, you just come out of retirement. You're the only one playing. Oh, nice. Who would Let's be pick easiest? on these guys. <laughs> yeah. Who would be the easiest to fold here, Grace, do you reckon? I don't know. Swoop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Correct yeah. answer. It was your birthday two weeks ago. Who gave you the shittest present and what was it? I actually didn't get a present. What? what? Oh, oh so rough. all of them. Well, we've got to send her a Schmidt in shirt or yeah, something. We'll send you something, Grace. Know, what have we got? Please. We've got milk crates. We got you we Nord VPN. <laughs> we'll send you something. Last one, Grace. The Wallaroos are playing the most test matches they have ever played in a calendar year with ten. Do you think this is a mark of a growth? This do you think this is a mark of growth in the women's game? And how many do you want to play next season? Um, ten. Is there ten in the calendar? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, oh, that is growth. Uh, it's a positive. Uh, there definitely needs to be some support around the states as well, but. I don't know. Play 10. Um, 10, 10, fucking 10. <laughs> Go 20. 20? Yeah. Play for the 30. Too. I mean, well, I don't write right. chess. Are you, you going to head back to Montpellier? Yeah, I am. Um, we're meant to play finals, but I, well, you know, with the French licensing, I don't know what's happening anymore because I stood on the pitch in Australia. So uh, still TBC right now, but we will see. Did you, um, did you bump into someone called Tom Whitford? No. Oh, he's, he was our he, translator he, at Toulon, but yeah. I'm sure the French... He's more than they, our translator, he's our team manager. <laughs> well, he didn't really manage oh, that well. <laughs> did, he, did, he send, did he send someone a photo? When yeah, I, I think he did, actually. I think he sent me a photo with you with him. Yeah. But he's no, gone across to like, Racing now, hasn't he? Yeah, so I don't yeah. think Montpellier sent yeah. uh, <laughs> the Racing manager across no, to Montpellier. He was there when she was there at a, a previous stint. Okay. He was there. He was. Yeah, he yeah, was. yeah. Yeah. I definitely met him. Yeah. Um, but I ended up with the too long crowd one day, and that was a pretty rough moment for me in Montpellier shirt. So. Yeah, yeah right. we know what we're doing down there. Yeah. <laughs> Grace, thank you so much for joining us. Um, wonderful to chat to you. Thanks, uh, Gracie. Yeah, All thank go you. well next weekend. Going well, yeah. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Enjoy, Mac. <laughs> we will. Right. We'll Do you want try to, say, to we'll say you say hi? Should we? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. Um, Very good. Grace she was great. She's great. Grace yeah, is great. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of great, um, well, 
he's an Aussie Irish or an Irish Aussie? What would you say here? I'd say he's like an Irish Canberran. <laughs> yeah, to throw it in there. Yeah, mate, of course you'd. Hey, joining us now, it's the great man Mac Hanson. Mac, looking very clean cut there. Here he is. Yeah, what's going on, guys? How are you? Um, yeah, just switching it up. <laughs> <laughs> what's that shirt you got on, mate? Oh, Can't it. Are you about to head off to training? Um, yeah, I will after this, yeah. No you're, rest for the wicked. You reckon you could sneak a Guinness in with the boys before you head off to training? Or you what? won't. You definitely <laughs> won't. You definitely won't. Uh, I probably could. It's good iron. So um, <laughs> I used to give it to pregnant women, so I couldn't see why. <laughs> Is that right? Apparently. They used to give maybe it to... Maybe it's a wives' tale. Yeah, and they used to give it to non-pregnant women as well, didn't they? <laughs> mm. Hey, Mac, uh, that's why we're having a Guinness. Congratulations to uh, your team. Island, everybody, raise your Guinness Guinnesses. Can I, can I Mate, I finished you? mine. Are yeah. oh, you finished? Sorry, boys, yeah, they're going through. <laughs> have another Guinness. How do you say, uh, do you know how you say cheers in Irish, Mac? What do you say? Slancha. 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 Yeah. Well, congrats anyway. Drew cost you the Grand Slam. Is there anything you want to say to yeah. Drew? Yeah, just fuck you, Drew. <laughs> I told you not to do it, and you couldn't help yourself. Yeah, I know, mate. I just, I just knew you guys didn't have it in you. <laughs> you. You were just after me the last one, just fucking bringing up my relationship. I know, oh. but, but. Has there been a silver lining? Has anyone been <laughs> sliding in or what? <laughs> Uh, no, no comment, mate, no comment. <laughs> no no comment, comment, which means there has been. You've been busy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Mac, have you chatted to any of the boys? Yeah, they, let's get to the good stuff. Yeah, are they still out? Are they still at Temple Bar? What's happening? Uh, no, I tried to distance myself. Um, what's the name? Faz, it was actually Faz. I was up there on, uh, during the week um, and... Faz was telling me to come up and uh, come to the games and then come to the piss up on Sunday. But I said, oh, I've got, I got rehab. I can't. Um, I got rehab on Monday. And he was like, oh, don't worry. I'll call you physio and we'll get that off for you. And I was like, oh, I think I've pretty much got to go in. So I'd say it's going to be wild enough. Um, but yeah, no, no missed calls or anything yet. Uh, but today is normally the big one. Is it? Oh, this is like when you uh, went around and visited a few blokes' fathers and picked them up and that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Today's the day. What about St. Paddy's? Is St. Paddy's Day over the weekend? Yeah, fuck me. Town was just like, town was jammed as well. Um, Everyone was on it by like 9 o'clock. 9 a.m. I I was was getting a coffee at 11 and there was people stumbling around. (laughs) What a country. Yeah, it is great. No wonder they won. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's fine. Do you know if St. Patrick played rugby? Uh, Yeah, he did. Sure. <laughs> what position was St. Patrick? Did we... He was a winger. Was he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just flying down the wing with his pot of gold in his hand. I don't know. I, just, I don't know if that's I just Patrick. merged a couple of things there. You did. Hey, Mac, how is the rehab going? Yeah, really good. Uh, I had a schedule, so uh, I don't think I'm going to rush back. Um, but yeah, aiming towards the, the Munster game. So about the 11th of May. So I still got a little while to go. But um, yeah, it's going good. Do I look really red on this? No, you look amazing, mate. I think you look good. Where's that dog? I'm used to the dog barking when we ask you questions. He actually just ran upstairs. He's had enough. I I thought he was about to say it passed away. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) It seemed like he was heading that way. (laughs) Now, obviously a lot of chat around uh, Ireland taking on South Africa, Mac. Are we allowed to talk to you about this or is this also some sort of thing where we're going to jinx you? Can we... No, we can talk about this. We can talk about this. Fantastic. Um, So that's pretty exciting. That's in July. Um, How are you going to go down there? Obviously pretty hard to play in South Africa, right, guys? Yeah, it's some places. Most places. Well, yeah. I mean, like altitude's always a bit tougher. Mm -hmm. I mean, you love playing in Newlands. It's a tough place to play, but it's not as tough on the lungs. But um, yeah, there's been a fair bit of chat about who's actually number one in the world. A few pundits sort of been claiming you guys are. Obviously, Springboks won the World Cup. Uh, this, will this decide it? Um, I think it'll go a long way, to be honest. Yeah, we, um, yeah, they won the World Cup, but obviously we're the only team they haven't beaten yet. Um, saying that, I think they're, they're still world number one at the moment, and we've got to prove 
you know, we've got to prove that we can beat them over there. Like, we've beaten them here and, um, yeah, yet to beat them at the home ground in a good while. So, um, I think, yeah, by the end of it, if we can get a win or two over there, 100% that we'll be crowned the, the number one for for a while again. And what's the what's the run-in for you, boys? So, you finish your um, club competition and then before you actually head over, how long do you guys get together before uh, the Test Series starts? Um... So when we went to New Zealand, it was only a week. We were only in a week and then we flew over. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be similar, but I think there's a bit more time off uh, like for a few of the a few of the teams or not, maybe depending on finals and stuff. But, uh, yeah, they haven't really done a two-match series, so I'm not too sure. Um, oh, is it only yeah, the two probably, matches? Yeah, it's only two. Oh. Weirdly enough. They're all only two, I believe. Is that, really? uh, yeah, so obviously the Wallabies are playing Wales in two and then we play Georgia. The All Blacks are playing England in two and then they play Fiji. And then South Africa's got Ireland for two and then I'm not sure who South Africa play. Boys. So the European teams, they, they're low, like managing their load, are they? Just yes. get the two games in. And I think right. France is going to Argentina for two. Okay. And then uh, I'm not sure who the other third test match for each of them. So what are. happens if it's one all and they're both claiming they're best in the world? What happens? What would you do, Prof? Uh, I'd go to Le Med. Down on Camps Bay. Who would win that one, Mac, if you go to Lamed? Us. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Lamed yeah. is a bar, is it? Yeah, it's a, one of the is great it, spots. It's a great Cafe bar? Caprice there. Yeah. Now, Mac, we are, we, we've been doing the Six Nations summation uh, for our Northern Hemisphere legends. Um, have you got time to sit with us and chat a bit of actual rugby? I do. I do, oh. of course. <laughs> well, you guys. wonderful. It is time now for the... Let's go maybe through some scorecards for each of the teams, right? Like, well, rather than doing the scores. Well, I mean, like, it's done. It's you don't done, think they'll right? care? Like, oh, there's, there's like a, there's one to six now in the Six Nations. Like Ireland, what we give them an A? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, an A. Yeah, you can't do any better than win. Other no, than I know, Grand but Slam, like, but, but you know, like one. Scotland, like they, they played pretty well throughout the course of the Six Nations. Like, how do you summarise them and where they sit moving forward? It's a tough one because they're. You know, every, I think I said it last time. Like every every year, they kind of see it as their year, and they they're yet to get there, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think they'd be pretty disappointed. I think they they ended up coming fourth. Fourth, didn't yeah. They? Mm. Wow. Only two wins. Well, so, yeah. they, so they could have, if they beat you by seventy seven points or something, they would have won it. But then they came fourth. I well, no, know. then because France beat England, so France would have won it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, the but they could have won the triple crown, Scotland. Okay, right. So they lost to yeah. the mainland Europeans. What do you make of the French, Mac? Uh, yeah, they were looking dangerous again in the last last two rounds, um, especially against Wales. Look, it's not a it's not a great Wales team at the moment, but they still show that they've got that French flair of old. Um, that new number nine they had come in, he's he's a beast as well, isn't he? Like mm. that that flick pass he did was. Crazy. Yeah. That was that a really it. good game. I got up. France v England was amazing. Did you watch it back to back? Yeah, it was yeah. seven a.m. So it was nice timing for us. I good. thought the um, the French, when they when they click like Max said, like attacking wise, they can score from anywhere. It's just they have those moments where they just clock off and let teams back in. I thought, you know, that actual game, to and fro the whole eighty minutes. It was a it was a quality game. But the team I really want to get a grading on is Italy. What do you? What do you think about them, Mac? This is the highest they've ever ranked. Yeah, it's you know they, it's got to be like in their minds, it's probably it's the best they've ever done. I think mm. um, two wins and a draw. It could have been three wins. Could have it could have easily been four wins to be honest. Like they could have uh, they they were only they were pretty unlucky against England. Um, same with France. So I give I don't know if you can give them an A because we're we're an A. Maybe well, we'll give B. you an A plus then. A plus. Yeah, we'll give them. An, I think they did. I think they did really well for a team that was, um, it was heading the way of getting kicked out of the Six Nations. They, they nutted up and they kind of showed that they they belonged to be there. So, yeah, absolutely, it was fair place. I'd, I'd give them. I'd give them an A. I would. <laughs> they nutted up. What's nutted up mean? You know, they fucking. Oh, they balled up. Nutted up. Nutted up. They, <laughs> yeah. they they not a crack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah got it. Got it. <laughs> What do you think about Wales and their rebuild just before well, we move yeah, on? I want to get a, a grading. So we've got A plus for Ireland. We've got B plus for Italy. Yep. Scotland. Just give us a quick fire. Like as in the, you're at school, what, what, what grade they get? I'd give them a D to be honest. They, yeah, they I came, was thinking you know, they, C. Yeah. D is a bit harsh. 
No, but that was what Mark said. D, uh, England? England, I'd give a B as well. For a, They were kind of... Yeah, I'd give them a B. I think that they were... They were under the same same again. They were under a lot of pressure, and for the way they finished the tournament, I think it showed a lot of. I think it'd be good for them. I think it got a lot of love back into English rugby, to be honest. From cool. being there at Twickenham, um, when they beat us, like the, yeah, the the crowd was going wild, and you could see a lot of smiles on the on the English faces. Where before, all the chat was was literally like, oh, I wonder how much we're going to lose by today, sort mm. of thing. Okay, what about France? Just a, a mark. Well, I guess I, I've kind of shot myself in the foot giving them a B. Maybe I'll give England a... No, I think in the scheme of things, I think for the... I think France would be disappointed with it. Even though they came second, it was kind of... They were never really in contention. I'd give them a, give them a C. And Italy. Well, we've already done Italy. Did you do yeah, Wales? I think he said B+. Wales. Plus. Yeah. Wales, sorry, Wales. Wales. Uh, oh, Wales, look, you've got to give them a... Because at school, was it an E? But were we going to say F? No, you go so D you to F. F, didn't you? You go to F. Plenty. Yeah. Plenty of them. <laughs> you can go to F. Plenty of them. Oh. Sue so got E for absent. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. But I love how much uh, you're pushing this grading system. Well, yeah, because anyway, keep going. Yeah. Are you, is it a social post, you think? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't oh, know. You're setting us up for something. Yeah, there's yeah. something here. No, I'd, give, I'd give Wales an F. I, I just think that they really underperformed and they, they'd they be very disappointed. Like, you know, to come last and to just not win a game, especially when they um, had, you know, it's not like their games at home that was massively close as well. Like Italy kind of really put it on them in the end there and then they were lucky to get two tries in like three minutes. Yeah, that's um, true. I think, I think that was just pretty pretty poor performance from them. We're dying to know what's the grading. What are we going to do with it now that yeah. he's done no, it? I just want him to, to, oh, to, like to actually grade. But yeah, we probably will put it in a social post. <laughs> now. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Hey, uh, Mac, we had a little thing where we each chose a side. Uh, I was Scotland, Swoop was Ireland. Uh Biv was France, France yep. uh, Gitz was Wales, Tommy Italy, and Ollie England. And because obviously Swoop won backing Ireland, we all decided today that he could do some sort of punishment <laughs> to Goit uh, because mm. Goit lost. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a leak. Here uh, I don't know if you can see yeah. on the camera. There's a, a large leak there, and we're just trying to work out what sort of punishment Swoop should give to Goit. Have you got any suggestions? One came to mind. It's probably not very appropriate. No, <laughs> no I think saying. we all had the Shoot same thought, hip. but we can't be doing that. <laughs> it is. It's appropriate. I was thinking of whipping it, across the back. What about just one, one whack? One whack across the back. What about or f- where? What about front side? <laughs> oh, mate, you can't hit me in the agates. <laughs> no, on the chest. <laughs> oh, chest. Yeah, I'm happy with that. P- yeah. Right. A leak sack that couldn't be bad. Wouldn't be bad. What a leak sack. Just a little. Have you seen the size leak. of this leak? <laughs> yeah, what about... We've got a big, a big leak. leak. They're not the same leaks I'll that you get in Ireland. This I'll is an Aussie leak. Bigger. All right, well, let's, should we do it now quickly while Max on the line? Where's he hitting me? You got your shirt chest? off. Just, yeah. No, nah, right. you don't yeah. have to do that. That's what, it that's what it is. No, it's not. You said a whack. No, it's, a, it's shirt off. Bang. Where you hitting me? It's like a tanning. I haven't decided yet. But is it back or chest? I won't hit him too hard. Back or chest? Um, let's go chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come sit here. All right. So for those of you listening, uh, Goit is standing. He's taking his shirt off. Jesus, oh, look at this ring. Sick. Can wow. you see that, Mac? Amazing. What's going Jeez. on? Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, okay. Nice, what, um, what percentage am I operating here? What's that? So this is. This is. Here we go. Here we go. So we just. Oh! <laughs> look, at that. look at those things. Oh. Let's let it watch it. There you go. Big, con- go big, it is. big it is. congratulations <laughs> to Mate, Ireland. What and about I, if, the rig you, the shape you're in. If you are from Ireland and you know a Welsh person, go buy a leak. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, I recommend it. Slap across the chest. <laughs> Feel good. Smells good too. Yeah, it does, doesn't, doesn't it? smell very leaky. Leaky. Uh, Mac, leaky chest. Did that, could you see that on the camera there? Did that look okay? That was great. That's going to be... That's going to be a new segment, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Leak of the week. Love it. (laughs) Hey, um, now we'll let Mac go here. He's got to get to his training, uh, unless anybody has anything else for Mac. I just want to ask, if you could start a rumour about yourself, (laughs) what would it be? I've got a nine-inch dong. (laughs) (laughs) No, I said a (laughs) rumour. Um... No, that's a good one. We'll take that. 
That's probably it, to be honest. So you want to shave a couple off, do you? It's too big. I'd say the chat. I'd say the chat around town isn't great. So to, to boost it up would be good. Yeah. Oh, very good, uh, Mac. Yeah. Before you go, I just want to ask one question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you following suit, Swoop? <laughs> no, not at all. What's your go-to dating app opener? <laughs> um. You know, I'm. I just. I just say hi. I just say hey. How <laughs> yeah. you going? That's all you need to do, Mac. That's all. That's all you there, need to do. Yeah. And then ask them uh, if they want to go on a date before they realise you've actually got shit chat. And then <laughs> say, have you heard I've the rumour? I've, I've got one, I've got one, I've got one. Um, who was the first celebrity you obsessed over as a kid? Oh, good one. Actually, Kim Kardashian. Was Kim it? Kardashian You're was, kidding. I used to watch, um, I used to watch the Kardashians. Uh, Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I found out, when I found out that was the thing, yeah, the, uh, the, Family computer was getting a workout. Um, <laughs> oh, the family the computer. computer. <laughs> that, that wasn't in a yeah, communal space. In the rhombus room. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't in a communal space. Yeah, I, I, um, I didn't have, a, I didn't have a phone or anything on my own. So hey, mum. <laughs> yeah, so Mac, those questions uh, just to spice up the show. We've been doing question from questions from Cosmopolitan's two hundred funny questions to get to know your dates. What you ask a date. On a first outing, uh, just to spice up the show, so people can get to know the players. So um, that's uh, that's like where it. they came from. Good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. We'll send them through to you as well in case you go on any dates. <laughs> please do, please do. As I said, my chat is horrendous. <laughs> no, mate, you're very good, and we'll get you on again. Uh, hope the rehab goes well, um, and uh, you're back playing soon against Munster. How far away was that? May. It was May. Wonderful. You need to listen. Hey. I was just saying, when he told us, you should have oh, listened. I heard you. Yeah. Yeah. He never listened. Um, <laughs> oh, I get it. All right. Hey, very good. Thank you, Mac. Gents. Hey, Thanks, Mac guys. Daddy. Good Thanks, see Mac. See you, yeah, Mac. Doug. And you got an island to win oh. two in South Africa. How good's Mac, boys? Oh, he's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Mac Daddy. Yeah. Amazing. Big congratulations to Ireland and to the Mac Daddy. Hey, just a reminder where you can get us on socials. Uh, we are at Kickoffs and Kickons on X. Insta, Kickoffs, Kickons. YouTube, Kickoffs and Kickons. And TikTok, Kickoffs. I mean, if they can't work that out, like, come on. Uh, I'm with you, man. Like, if, you know the name. Just type it, it in your search bar. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Hey, uh, if you want to send more stuff in, whoever sent that video in, that was fantastic. Um, oh, maybe don't open up those cans. <laughs> we've already, we've had a bunch sent in, to be honest. Have that we? was the first one. Yeah, there's some really good stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll roll another one of Drew in next week. That's going to be great. Uh, hey, um, I'm going to wind this up here, guys. You cool with that? Yeah, yeah sure. Go home, but I, don't, I have nowhere to go. Swoop, you got a six, don't you? I've got a six. Where are what you going? You Wrap it up. North board meeting. North rugby. See, giving back to the grassroots of. It's what we do, Drew. I know. Well, it's what you do. <laughs> we don't do it. Well, I flew up to Brisbane to, to oh, there you support go. grassroots. What did you do? I drove up here <laughs> every Monday. <laughs> here All are. right. Hey, that was kickoffs and kick ons. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week. Uh, hey, all that's left to do is... Coco! G'day, please. If you like the show, well, show us you liked it by pressing like and subscribe so we can exist because we don't have any more money. We need your support. And make sure you check out our other videos.